Everyone loves a great mystery. It's usually the driving force in almost any plot, whether that mystery be will they, won't they in a rom-com, or what's the mysterious treasure at the end of a long and exciting adventure. However, today we're here to talk about one of the greatest mystery tropes in writing, the whodunit. There's something about films that take you along the detective journey, solving a crime and putting the bad guy away at the end, that makes you feel smart, provocative, brave. Nothing beats that feeling, especially if you put the clues together at the end and solve the puzzle ahead of the film's protagonist. While there are hundreds of true crime thrillers and documentaries out there, we decided to put a list together of our favorites in the genre. Let's get to it then, shall we? I'm Jackie Kay here with Fat Ninja Studios, and this is 12 Detective Crime Thrillers Worth the Watch. Number 1, Wind River. Set during the winter on the Wind River Indian Reservation in Wyoming, a tracker from U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Corey Lambert, and FBI agent Jane Banner begin an investigation into a homicide after finding a young Native woman barefoot and dead in the snow from burst lungs. She has several marks on her, at first thought to be animal-related, but then determined to be defensive wounds. Tracking the case to the nearby oil drilling site where the young woman's boyfriend worked as a security guard, and the film begins to unravel in brutal fashion. Expert casting, stunning cinematography, and a few brilliant moments of action and suspense, and this is a film you must definitely check out for your detective crime thriller fix. Number 2, Silence of the Lambs. While not the first iteration of the character, and certainly not the last, Silence of the Lambs brought us the formidable Anthony Hopkins as the devilishly genius and delectable Hannibal Lecter. Young FBI agent Clarice Starling is working on a case hunting the serial killer, Buffalo Bill, coined so as he likes to skin his humps. As a profiler, she needs to build the portfolio of the killer, and her boss, Jack Crawford, suggests she talks to noted serial killer Hannibal Lecter, who previous to his incarceration had assisted the FBI in catching many other murderers. The moment Clarice steps into the deepest level of the asylum and walks up to the glass cage that houses a creepily awaiting Dr. Lecter, the film takes a shift into the perverse and haunting nature of individual desires. With a surprising twist later on in the film, and a horrifying near-final scene all shot in darkness, this film is both a crime thriller and a genre-breaking horror film. If you have not seen this film yet for some reason, stop what you're doing and go watch it right now. Number 3, 7. The dulcet tones of Morgan Freeman's voice slowly lull us into this neo-noir detective-style story set in a rainy every city like New York or Chicago, where the air is thick with pollution and everything has a slightly gray tinge to it. William Somerset, the detective played by Freeman, is just shy of his retirement when a case lands on his desk that seems to be the first in a series of serial murders. He is then partnered with young David Mills, fresh from the rookie beat, full of youthful pride and a short-tempered fuse. As more and more victims are uncovered, they begin to see a pattern surrounding the seven deadly sins, most notably written about in David Alighieri's Inferno. A gritty and disturbingly dark film, excellently directed by David Fincher, if you are looking for a true old-school style detective crime story, then this is the cream of the crop. Just be warned, there are some scenes of intense and disturbing violence and gore. Number 4, Zodiac. While the Zodiac Killer was never caught in actuality, several different suspects have reached notoriety through the case's investigation. One such investigation was published in a book, Zodiac, by San Francisco Chronicle political cartoonist Robert Graysmith. The film follows Graysmith through his investigation, as well as cuts to the actual murders themselves and the terror it tore through the city during 1969 to late 1978. 
another brilliant effort by David Fincher. This one is less gritty and more surreal, taking its time to flesh out the many key players and really making you feel as a part of the victims' lives up until the moment of their demise. Based on real events, it's a perfect entryway to the mystery of who the Zodiac Killer was and whether or not there was more than one accomplice, or if any of the numerous suspects sitting in prison now for unrelated crimes are the true identity of the killer. Number 5, Fargo. While it takes place in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the name Fargo comes from the FBI branch headquarters in Fargo, North Dakota. Written and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohn, the film borders on dark comedy mixed with brutality, following a car salesman, Jerry Lundergaard, as he plans to extort his rich father-in-law by staging a kidnapping of his own wife. Frances McDormand plays Brainerd Police Chief Marge Gunderson as she investigates the murder of a local police officer and an abandoned vehicle that leads back to the dealership. This opens the case in a true stumble-upon fashion. With an excellent supporting cast, including Steve Buscemi, Peter Stormare, John Carroll Lynch, and Bruce Campbell, the film unfolds into a wondrous bouquet of Midwest colloquialisms and scenery-chewing dialogues. And let's not forget the infamous wood chipper scene, which will stick with you for years to come. Number 6, Mystic River. Directed by Clint Eastwood and set in Boston, the film follows the aftermath of the murder of young Katie, a 19-year-old daughter of Jimmy, local ex-con, who runs a convenience store. Katie plans on leaving with her boyfriend to Las Vegas, but decides to have one more farewell drink with her friends at a bar. The night she is murdered, just as across town, Jimmy's old friend from when they were kids, David, comes home covered in blood, saying he fought off a mugger. When they were kids, David was abducted and sexually abused and has lived with the trauma ever since. As the cops begin to investigate, Jimmy decides to enact his own search for the killer, and they begin to suspect David. It all culminates in a gut-wrenching finale, which we won't spoil here, but definitely worth a watch if you're looking for a film that not only takes you through a neo-noir detective experience, but also fully illustrates what a grieving parent will do to get justice for what they have lost. Number 7, The Bone Collector. Starring Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie, this detective thriller sees quadriplegic forensics expert Lincoln Rhymes contacted by an old police colleague to help work on a case after rookie officer Amelia Donahue discovers a mutilated corpse buried in an old Civil War era railroad bed. The killer poses as a taxicab driver to abduct his victims, murdering one part of the couple and setting up an elaborate puzzle to be solved in order to save the other person. As Lincoln and Amelia put the clues together from the crime scene, they find the missing woman's location but are too late to save her as she is burned to death by a steam pipe. As more clues are put together, it seems the killer is staging crimes to replicate ones from a fictional book. With a surprise twist killer reveal at the end, and some genuinely creepy moments, the film highlights how important it is to interpret forensic evidence properly, a definite must watch. Number 8, No Country for Old Men. A slow burn following three different characters at various points of time throughout the film. Their Sheriff Ed Tom Bell, played by Tommy Lee Jones, close to retirement and feeling out of place in a modern world. With the advancements in killer profiling and motives beyond just money, now leering into the more depraved and sadistic, Bell questions whether or not he has the ability to even solve such crimes. Then there's Llewellyn Moss, frantically portrayed by Josh Brolin, who after a night of pronghorn hunting comes across a suitcase filled with two million dollars in a drug deal gone bad. He steals the case, leaving behind a wounded Mexican man, and stashes the case in a hotel room after telling his wife to go to her mother's for a while. Then finally there's Anton Chigurh, embodied with menace by Javier Bardem. Chigurh has an unusual weapon in his arsenal as he treks across the hard desert lands chasing after the briefcase, 
and that is a captive bolt pistol. Oh, if you don't know what that is, it's used to cull sheep and cattle by shooting a long steel rod into the brain of the animal. Shigur uses it in a variety of ways, whether it's to break open locks, to putting down a nosy patrolman. However, if you're expecting a by-the-numbers crime procedural, then you'll be in for a rather odd surprise as the story does not end in any traditional manner, and rather in a more thoughtful and poignant way. Based on the novel of the same name, written by Cormac McCarthy and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohn, it's a slow burn, Old West style sunset piece definitely for the more reflective viewer. Number 9, The Usual Suspects. Who is Kaiser Soze? A legendary twist with little obtuse hints sprinkled throughout the film for a totally amazing reveal, the film follows a group of conmen after a botched robbery and an ensuing massacre that left only two alive. As customs agent Dave Koulian interviews Verbal Kint about the incident, the film takes us through the hiring of the conmen by a man named Kaiser Soze, and the subsequent events leading up to the eventual massacre. I won't spoil it for you here, but suffice it to say, it's the best cat and mouse style verbal boxing match in film history, and definitely worth checking out. One interesting tidbit, during the lineup scene, Benicio Del Toro let out a real loud fart in real life, which caused all the other actors to break character, leading up to a hilariously ad-libbed sequence of scenes. Number 10, Kiss the Girls. Based on James Patterson's novel of the same name, it follows forensic psychologist Alex Cross as he investigates the Casanova killer a serial rapist and murderer who kidnaps young women and tortures them over a period of a few weeks before eventually taking them out to the woods to be killed. When Cross's niece is kidnapped by the serial killer, he gets involved personally as a favor to his sister. Soon they come across one of the victims who managed to escape, Kate McTiernan, played by Ashley Judd, and with her help they track down the killer's hideout. A bombastic ending ensues with a few twists along the way. If you're a fan of Patterson's work, this is an excellent adaptation and even spawned a sequel, Along Came a Spider, starring Morgan Freeman as Alex Cross in both films. Number 11, Insomnia. An earlier directing effort by the incredibly talented Christopher Nolan, Insomnia sees Will Dormer, played by Al Pacino, and his partner, Hap Eckert, called to Nightmuke, Alaska, to investigate the murder of a 17-year-old girl. Dormer suffers from insomnia, and while he stays in Alaska, it remains daylight for 20 hours a day, not helping his sleeping issues. He receives a mysterious phone call from the killer, who claims to suffer from the same issues, and that they are more alike than anything, which enrages Dormer. Dormer was currently under investigation himself on corruption charges, and during a chase scene set in an eerily foggy forest, Dormer accidentally shoots his partner Eckhart, who just coincidentally was set to testify against him. This makes local detective Ellie Burr, a curious turn by Hilary Swank, suspicious about Dormer and look further into his background. The film culminates into an interesting standoff and nail-biting, emotionally heavy final act. Number 12, Monster. Eileen Warnos, cold-blooded killer or victim of a tragic life. The film dives deep into her journey, from letting boys touch her sexually as a teen for money, to her tumultuous marriage, and finally her vagrant criminal life as a prostitute and thief. With award-winning makeup turning the beautiful Charlize Theron into a sun-bleached, tooth-rotting, swamp-born sociopath, she plays the character with such incredible nuance and sympathy. Eileen Warnos was accused and convicted of murdering seven men in Florida, and originally claimed that they were all in self-defense as she was prostituting and they attacked her. These claims were later recanted as evidence proved she murdered them in the first degree, and the testimony of her lesbian lover, Selby Wall. 
While at times heart-wrenching, the film does not shy away from the awfulness of the crimes themselves and the traumatic life that she led. An interesting debate for afterward is whether the punishment fit the crimes, since it is rare to see a woman put on death row. And that's the end of the list. Which of these were your favorite? Do you have another film that we might have overlooked? Feel free to leave a comment below, and if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to stab that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases via notification. You can also reach us on Twitter, at StudiosFat, and chat with us on Discord, link below in the description. If you're feeling generous, check out our Patreon. With as little as $1 a month, you can help us solve more mysteries, like what our next list is going to be about. I've always loved a good mystery, although these days it's mostly relegated to what I'm going to do with the limited hours I have in a day, but the ones I've always dug the most were about how far the detective was willing to put themselves into the mindset of the antagonist in order to catch them, and the suspense that comes from the moments just before they actually do. With that being said, this has been Jackie K for Fat Ninja Studios, and before I go, I just wanted to say that life is full of mysteries, but they don't all need to be solved overnight. Take your time, explore different avenues, learn from any mistakes, and don't give up, because you can do it. Just don't burn yourself out. Peace.